Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you a secret method that nobody talks about for losing weight permanently, but without a single diet. Now, if you're like most people, you probably tried dozens, perhaps hundreds. One of my clients told me she felt like she had tried thousands of diets throughout your lifetime. Unfortunately, with no success or maybe just a teensy, weensy, weensy amount of success. Now, the reason why most diets fail is because they're not sustainable in the long run. But what if there was a way to actually lose weight permanently without dieting, without starving yourself, without excessive workouts and exercises, without reaching your goals yet feeling like it was so hard to get there that it's just not sustainable. Well, there is a way, and I'm going to show you how it's done in this episode of The Dr. Grant Show. I'm going to be covering the following three topics. Number one, dieting alone is not the answer. Number two, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to weight loss, but we're going to discuss what your options are. Number three, focusing on your mental health, not your weight, is actually crucial for lasting success. Let's go. So before we begin, let's talk about the fact that for those of you that have tried and didn't succeed the way that you expected in your diet, or you tried and, well, you succeeded, but then kind of fell off the wagon, I want to let you know that you are not alone in this. And it's because certain things are broken. We're approaching dieting and weight loss from an old mindset and old blueprint. The calories in, calories out model on its own is not sustainable. And there are reasons why. It's because we're not taking a behavioral based psychological approach and intertwining it into what your desires are and how your life specifically operates. And because everyone is different, has been raised in different homes, your values and your belief system is going to be different. That also means that whoever you're interacting with at work, the people that you get along with, perhaps their values and belief systems mesh with your own. For people at your job that are really causing you to crave sugar or crave salty chips and crackers, you're clashing. You're going against company culture. And it's because your values and belief systems aren't aligned. And this is causing stress. This is causing you to derail and go off your diet, either through the stress alone or due to lifestyle changes. How many times, how many times have you swore you were going to fit that workout in, but then something happened and you had to work late on a project and all your energy was sapped and drained? The problem is many of us are turning the volume down on who we are and what we need just in order to agree or to avoid pushing people away. 
The only problem is that over time, we push ourselves away. We push ourselves away from our health. We push ourselves away from our dreams. Now, your body and your mind loves you. It is always seeking homeostasis. It doesn't care about your expanding waistline in order to achieve it. And for people that are emotional eaters, food addicts, people that struggle with obesity, your challenges are more on the outside because your coping mechanisms deal with food. And the irony is, of course, you need food to live. But when it becomes your coping mechanism, it gets overindulged in without the right tools to help you regulate your neural energetic biochemical makeup. Number two, dieting alone is not the answer. Now, my digital wellness practice is based in evidence-based approaches. And I'm elated over that because there are some things that were originally listed as not being evidence-based 30 years ago. Here's looking at a chiropractic medicine. If you go back maybe 40 years, psychiatric approaches, yoga, acupuncture. 30 years ago, these were not listed as evidence-based. Hypnosis, EFT tapping, behavioral-based approaches to health cognitive behavioral therapy. But now we fast forward 30 years later and I am over the moon that science has finally caught up with what I've been looking at for quite some time. There's evidence, according to researchers, that suggests that dieting and restrictive dieting, it does, it does lead to rapid weight loss. But the gains and the victories are short-lived because it results in, according to scientific research, slowing down your metabolism, altering your hormones, regulating and adjusting your hunger. In the end, your body in this weight loss state winds up responding differently to food and exercise than a body that has not dieted at all and just simply found ultimately what works for them. That is all the more reason why it is so important to find what works for you. Find out what your triggers are. Find out why your body keeps craving certain foods. When you take one bite of something, what is it about that specific food that's causing you to take more than one bite, to take two, to take 10, to eat the whole bag or the whole box? Willpower, isn't it? Calorie counting, it's a guide. It's helpful. I appreciate calorie counting. However, on its own, it is simply not sustainable unless we find out the scientific root and psychological root of the problem. Which leads me to number two, that there, uh, there is... No one size fits all solution to weight loss. We can graft onto anyone's weight loss efforts a couple of guardrail rules if you're completely unaware of the food that you consume and the energy that it exerts on your body. That is where calories in and calories out has some virtue. But once again, there's so many resources out there that 
it's very difficult to say at this point with the many people that I've talked to, in addition to the scientific study that I designed to help food addicts and emotional eaters actually lose weight in a very short amount of time. It's, it's not about that. It's good to know how many calories are in that bagel or that can of soda compared to the apple and the bucket of lettuce. But without the motivation and the drive to eat it because your energy is tapped out because you've been wrestling with things in your life that are draining you, your job, your relationships, the memory of past relationships. For some people, even spirituality. No matter where you stand on that point, some people are not settled and comfortable where they are. And that discomfort is very disconcerting and unsettling. And all of these things are like little trap doors that you're trying to keep closed, like a game of whack-a-mole. You're trying to whack down each concern, each hurt, each silent whisper at night that nags at you and tells you, you you could have done better. You shouldn't have said that. Your, your, your parent always said that you were, you fill in the blank. Until we address that, so to speak, drunken hamster on a wheel in our head, whispering to us constantly from the moment that we open our eyes to the moment that we close our eyes, We're never going to experience true freedom. And this is the reason why traditional diets don't work. Because the first question needs to be, does your individual mission, your area of grace, fit your mindset? and your eating habits. You see, this cognitive dissonance that we encounter, the imbalance between a job that we are working to simply pay the bills and but it doesn't really light us up, it doesn't ignite our soul, the relationship that once started off great and now you don't even know where you stand anymore. And you're trying to keep on. Or maybe the relationship is past and you're single or divorced or widowed. And you're still trying so hard to deal with those emotions that keep popping up. And the questions that keep nagging you in your mind when you lay your head down on the pillow at night. And to soothe, to cope. the food cravings come in, as well as the binges. This cognitive dissonance, these are your triggers. The imbalance between where you are and where you want to be. This is the reason why there is no one size fit all solution to weight loss. We're trying to button down a standard solution to weight loss to unique people. This leads me to number three. Focusing on your mental health, not your weight, is crucial for lasting success. Allow me to expound upon this a moment. When you choose to focus on how you feel, what your needs are, how do certain events in your life line up with your goals, your beliefs, your value system, 
you begin to experience a massive shift in your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind will go along for the ride until until it butts up against something that it doesn't agree with. You see, it's very subtle, the retreating from your goals. It comes as instead of getting up at 5 a.m. to work out, it turns into, let's just press the snooze button. Uh, It feels warm under these covers. I'm not a morning person anyway. I'll start tomorrow or next week. Or I felt tired. I've been tired all week. I've been eating out all week. I know it's not good for me, but I don't have the time to cook. I'm I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to start tomorrow. It comes as a whisper. Just grab that one candy bar, that one licorice stick, that one scone, that one muffin, that one slice of cake. It'll be okay. But then later on, you're still having another one of the one or two of the one or another chip or another cracker. When you become more aware by awakening the guard at the gate and the door of your mind, it's almost like that wonderful trilogy where the wizard says, You shall not pass. That's the first step. Becoming aware of, number one, what are the circumstances that are causing your mental health to wobble and waffle? What's causing you to retreat from your goals? When the number on the scale doesn't line up to your expectations, How many times have you thought you were doing so good and you hop on the scale and it's like the scale, I can almost imagine it whispering, you've been doing not as good as you thought. (laughs) And then you feel like, well, many people have told me when they experience that moment, they say, well, shucks. I'm not doing what I planned on doing anyway, so I might as well eat this brownie or brownies. I might as well eat this cookie or the whole bag of cookies. I might as well eat this bag of crackers or get two burgers instead of one. The list can go on and on. It's time to shift the narrative. It's time to get the tools so that you can learn from these low points. You see, when you take this approach, when you begin to have the tools to access what laid the foundation or even who laid the foundation for your subconscious mind, you begin to crack open the door to see the other side of the solution. Now, we were not talking about looking at this through your own eyes and becoming sucked back into the emotion again, if it feels like potentially this could be too painful. In my digital wellness practice, we have a method that allows you to see what happened at that crucial moment However, it's almost as if you are 20 feet, 50 feet up in the air. You're able to look at the situation as it transpires and even how it affects other things on the timeline of your life. When you're able to see and even understand how that sets certain things in motion with you, why you gravitate towards chocolate. When you begin to get to the root of the problem and access your subconscious mind, 
You can begin to recode your subconscious mind with the right tools and the right method. There are many different methods out there to recode your subconscious mind, but it's important to know which method will apply and work for you at this point, this time, and this chapter that you're currently in, in your life. Only working with a qualified specialist can help you get there. You see, once you understand your neuroacoustic code, once you understand your biochemical individual approach and signature, every step that you take through your fear, through your confusion, redefines and frees you. It gives you armor. You become battle tested. When you access the subconscious mind, you push past your fears. You push past your confusion. You also begin to see the real reasons for not meeting your health goals consistently. You begin to use this. You begin to see how you are impacted. Imagine that. Imagine how your world would shift if you were able to actually see how you were impacted. Prune that neuroacoustic and energetic attachment to it. Take what works for you and leave the rest. Step on those reasons for not succeeding on your way to creating your legacy. When this happens, you also begin to learn what your true value is. Not just to yourself. You begin to learn your true value in relationships so that other people can learn to treat you how you deserve to be treated. You upgrade your relationships. You show up more powerfully and confident and calm at your job. You're certain of yourself. Concepts that previously eluded you because the veil has been lifted from the confusion of your life. You've lifted the shame. You've lifted the guilt. You've lifted all of that. And your whole world begins to open up. Everything becomes more vivid because you are now able to see your true possibility. All right. So if you're someone who's tried to lose weight before and failed, (laughs) then perhaps we should have an interesting conversation. Over 80% of dieters and their efforts to lose weight usually fail. And that's because most people are trying to lose weight the wrong way. They focus on the food they can't have instead of the actual solution to their problem. But What if I told you there was a way to lose weight without starving yourself? A way to address the psychology and the mindset behind your food cravings so you could pull up that desire by the roots. A way to actually sever the neurological connection between food and emotion, which is driving your behavior anyway. So this way, you can have long-lasting and sustainable results. At My Digital Wellness Practice of Phoenix Six, we tailor make solutions based on our clients' unique experiences and situation. 
we spend a unlimited amount of time that is focused exclusively on you to find the solutions that work specifically for your situation. Our method includes everything, everything under one roof. Innovative psychological approaches to actually access easily and simply your subconscious mind to help recode and reprogram it. Virtual cooking classes where I take you side by side on areas that you may not feel so sure about, new recipes, ideas, and we go side by side in my kitchen. You're in your kitchen in the comfort of your own home and I'm in mine. And I'm walking you through step by step how to make a dish, removing all the intimidation factors and virtual workouts that are customized to fit specifically your needs, your flexibility level and strength level. So if you're tired of failing at diets or succeeding and failing, if you're really ready to finally lose the weight and keep it off, then go ahead and reach out to us. I invite you to just simply have a interesting, solution-driven conversation with me. I will work with you one-on-one and I will examine every part of your life and immerse myself in it. We'll find out together what contributes to your emotional eating and provide you solutions that you can actually use immediately. No waiting, no dragging things out. So if you are really ready to lose weight without diets, I invite you to reach out to me. We should have a conversation. Everyone, thank you so much for watching The Dr. Grant Show. We are wrapping up season five. We are on Wednesdays at nine o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time and Saturdays at nine o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned for the new book that's coming out September 1st the new sound bath using divine EFT tapping sound bath hypnosis to help emotional eaters, food addicts, and people trying to lose weight. All right. Much love to you. Bye.